Um, there's just these four types of gas evolution reactions. So you can just look for these four products and that's the only type of reaction that is gas evolution. So one of them makes a gas directly, the other three break down into water and a gas, but there's no other type of this reaction that you'll see. You don't have to invent any of them or predict any of them. Like this is just it. So you're just looking for these four things when you're thinking about gas evolution. Then we started talking about redox reactions. I'm just holding it up because you have all of this. So this is from what we did on Friday. Um, and we talked about how redox is different than all of the double displacement because the charges actually are going to change. And then we went through and talked about what the charges were. And so we talked about how we're going to still use the periodic table to predict all the charges. The only thing really that's new is saying, okay, well, if something's by itself, the charge starts out at zero. And also, if it doesn't have a rule that's on this list, then we just figure it out so the compound charges work out. Then we did a bunch of practice with that. And then we introduced the idea of oxidizing and reducing agents by looking at what the charges were and then what that happened to them on the product side so we would know what was going on. So the last thing is being actually able to predict how these reactions happen in single displacement. So redox and single displacement are basically the same idea. And so I'll just highlight that this is still redox. Okay. But now we're going to use a special, I don't know, cheat code, I guess, which is the activity series. And so the activity series is the thing next to your solubility chart on your yellow sheet. But basically it tells you how easily something can be oxidized based on where it is on the chart. So this is the ability of a metal to be oxidized. So something that's at the top of the chart is easily oxidized, which means it can easily lose electrons. Oops, lose electrons, which means that it is a good reducing agent. So you'll see that the alkali metals are really good reducing agents, and we'll show you this in lab, actually, this week, by the reaction of sodium in water. At the bottom of this chart are things that are hard to oxidize. That should say oxidize. Hard to oxidize, so they do not want to lose electrons. Okay, so they are good oxidizing agents because they do not want to be oxidized. So you're going to look at this chart at first and be like, I don't know what the hell this does, but let me just walk you through what this chart is for and how we're going to use it. So any metal will be oxidized by an ion of an element below it in this table. So if the metal, that's the thing that's going to be a solid in your reaction, is above the ion, which is the thing that's AQ, then a reaction happens, and we're going to use the table to know what that reaction is. Now, if the opposite happens, where the ion, which is the thing that's AQ, is above your metal, which is your solid, then no reaction happens. And because redox means that we need both reduction and oxidation, if both of your things are solids or both of your things are ions, then we also have no reaction because we won't be able to have both oxidation and reduction. So when you look at this chart, you're going to look for the two things that are your reactants in the equation that we're looking at. And so we're going to look at this table. One of your things is going to go to the product side 
one of your things already will be on the product side, so it's going to go back to the reactant side. And this table also tells you what charges things have and what state of matter things have. It's very hard to look at this table and know what we're going to do with it, so obviously I need to give you some examples, right? So let's start with an example. Okay, so actually I don't think this is how your notes look anymore. I better update that. This isn't right. It used to be right. I don't think this is how your page looks anymore. Okay. So, the next page actually looks like it says reaction of metals with acids or salts. So, give me one second because I need to update what's, what I'm looking at here. I was really prepared for class, I swear, but this doc cam really hates me. So, it's determined to embarrass me today, apparently. Okay. So we got to save a PDF, just, you know, hang out while I save a PDF and also act like an idiot because it's going to take me a long time because I'm apparently a grandma. <laughs> All right. Grandma's almost there, I promise, kids. Ay, ay, ay. And then I'll probably awkwardly send this to one of you instead of myself. Typical. How's everyone? Talk amongst yourselves. It's really fun stuff. I don't know where I saved it to, so of course that's helpful as well. Christ. I don't know who I just sent that to, so sorry if it was you. All right. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad it saved one page of the notes. Okay. Hooray, I did it. Congrats, me. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about using the activity series. So when we're using the activity series, we're either going to react a metal with an acid or we're going to react a metal with another salt. So if we're trying to react a metal with an acid, it's going to do a different type of reaction than a metal with a salt. So let's look at what this is. So generally, single displacement reactions will either form H2 gas or a metal in the solid state, depending on which one we use. So if we are reacting a metal with an acid, what we're going to do first is decide if the reaction's going to occur by using the activity series. So we're going to look for magnesium, which is our solid, so that's the metal. And we're going to look for H+, which is our acid or hydrogen. So let's go back to our chart and we say, okay, is magnesium above hydrogen? Yeah, it is, right? And so we know it's going to work. And so what happens to magnesium? It's going to go to the 2 plus ion. Hydrogen's already H plus as the acid, right? And so it's going to go the other way. So let's look at how this is a single displacement reaction. So magnesium is going to pick up the chloride, 
What charge does magnesium have when it's an ion? Two plus. So how many chlorides does it need? Two. Very good. So we'll write MgCl2, which is soluble. And our other product is H2 gas. How did I know that? Because the chart told me. Okay? So again, look, going back to this, magnesium started here, and as the product, now it's the two plus ion. The acid started over here, but now it's H2 as the gas. And so what you'll notice is that we made the gas right here on this side. So let's look at the oxidation states of everything. Okay, so what happened, or what is magnesium when we're starting out? What does that oxidation state look like? If it's just an atom by itself, what's its oxidation state? Zero. Good. All right, what about H? What is its oxidation state? Plus one. Very good. Plus one. What about chloride? Minus one. This is all familiar, right? Okay, now on the product side, magnesium has an oxidation state of plus 2, and chlorine has an oxidation state of minus 1. That didn't change. But what happened to H? What is its oxidation state? 0, because it's by itself. Excellent. So what changed? Well, magnesium went from 0 to plus 2. Hydrogen went from plus 1 to 0. So what happened to magnesium? Did it get oxidized or reduced? Oxidized, yeah, because it lost some of its negativity. It got positive, right? So it got oxidized, meaning it was the reducing agent because it's higher up on the list. Hydrogen, on the other hand, must have gotten reduced, which means it was an oxidizing agent, which is what we said. It's lower on the list. Everybody with me so far? All right. Now let's look at if we, instead of using hydrogen, we instead have a metal in the solid state reacting with an ion in, that is aqueous. So S means we have the metal. AQ means we have the ion. So we have to decide, is potassium above aluminum? So potassium is right up here. Aluminum is down here. So is it? Yes. So what happens to potassium? We start in the solid state, and we're going to make potassium ions by doing a single displacement. Aluminum is doing the opposite. It's already the 3 plus ion because it's aqueous, so now it's going to become the metal. All right? So let's look at the single displacement reaction. So potassium is going to pick up Cl. And what's the formula when potassium and chloride come together? KCl, right? It's pretty straightforward because K is plus 1, Cl is minus 1, and we know that's aqueous according to our solubility chart. What's the other product that we make? Aluminum, right, just as the solid. And so you'll see in lab that this is actually a visible change. You'll be able to see the metal forming in the solution, and it looks really cool. Okay. So then we have to make sure that this equation's balanced. So how many chlorides do we have on the left? Three, so we need three on the right. So we'll also need three potassium. All right, let's look at our oxidation states. What's the oxidation state of potassium as the solid by itself? Goose egg, right? Nothing. Okay, what about aluminum as an ion? Three, right? Aluminum has to be three because of where it is on the periodic table. What's the charge on chlorine? Negative one, 
right? Because it's a halogen. So that's where we can just fill that in. All right, let's look at the product side. What happened to potassium? What is its charge? Plus one, right? Because it's combined now with chloride. Okay, what's the charge of chloride? Minus one. Good. And what about aluminum now that it's by itself? Zero. Good. So let's talk about what changed. Potassium went from zero to plus one. Aluminum went from plus three to zero. So which one got oxidized? Potassium. Which one got reduced? Aluminum. So that means that potassium was the reducing agent. Aluminum chloride was the oxidizing agent. Are you with me? Okay, now we're going to do an example. Will a solution of FeCl2 oxidize magnesium metal? We're going to write balanced equations for all this. Okay, here we go. Use your table. I'm going to call on somebody and ask you, should this reaction happen? Mystery. Who am I going to call on today? Oh. Look at your table. We're looking for, which one are we looking to be on top? Iron or magnesium? Magnesium, right, because it's the metal. So, Zoe, should the reaction go? Because where is magnesium relative to iron? Above it, excellent. So magnesium is above iron, so the reaction occurs. Okay, let's write what the reaction is. So FeCl2 is our ion. It's reacting with magnesium metal. And we're going to do our single displacement where magnesium's gonna steal chlorine. Let's go back to our chart and see what charges are gonna happen. Right? So we've got magnesium and we've got iron. Magnesium starts as the solid and goes to the 2 plus ion. Iron starts as the 2 plus ion and then goes to the metal. So what is the formula of our first product? MgCl2, excellent job. Thanks, Ella, good bravery. Okay, MgCl2, because magnesium is two plus, so it needs two chlorides to make it neutral. What's our other product? Alyssa, any idea? Excellent, it's just the solid iron. So if you were looking at this happening in a solution, what you would see is this is kind of a silvery metal. It's going to kind of go away. And iron, which is much darker, is going to form in there. All right, now let's do the CIE. Should FeCl2 break up, Isaiah? Uh, yes. Because it's aqueous. Good. What's it going to break up into? You, it's okay, no worries. What is FeCl2 going to break up into? FeCl. Exactly. Iron ions that are aqueous and two chloride ions that are aqueous. Okay, what happens to magnesium? Brooklyn. It stays. Stays the same, yeah. What's it going to break up into? Nothing, because it's just magnesium. It's not going anywhere. Okay, then is magnesium chloride going to break up, Dustin? Yes. Into? Uh, magnesium Excellent, chloride ions, yes. And we've got two of them. And we know it has to be chloride ions because only ions can be aqueous. And what happens to iron, Glenn? Stays the same. 
Yes. Okay. What is going to cancel here, Trinity? Yeah, the chlorides. So if we look at our net ionic equation, I get really excited about this because you can really see what's happening to the electrons when you write out the net ionic equation. And you can also see how important it is to balance because the charges will balance as well. So let's take a look at this statement right here. Iron ions were able to get electrons from magnesium. And the magnesium became charged because it gave up two electrons and the iron became neutral. And so this statement very clearly shows you where the electrons went. Also, do we have the same number of atoms on both sides? Yes, but you know what else we have the same on both sides? The charges, two plus. 2 plus. It's on a new thing, right? But that doesn't matter. What is important here, and I'm going to write it in a different color, is that we have to balance both. Come on. Why are you rude? Okay. We have to balance our atoms and our charges. And it was easy to do because we had the chlorides there to help us. Okay, let's do the next one. Now we're going to react water with sodium metal. Now, let's think about how that's going to look. So sodium metal is reacting with water. But just like I did in my acid-base reactions, what I'm going to do is rewrite water. Instead of H2O, I'm going to write it as HOH. This way, you'll be able to see what the products are going to be. So we need to decide, is sodium above hydrogen? Let's look at our chart. Okay, so we've got sodium. Oop. Sodium, and we've got hydrogen. Okay? Is sodium above hydrogen, Sammy? Yes, it is. So the sodium is going to go to the 2 plus form, and hydrogen is currently in its plus ion, but it's going to go to the H2 gas. So sodium is above hydrogen, so the reaction occurs. And the reason why I write water as HOH is because the sodium is going to pick up the OH ion and make sodium hydroxide. And the other product is what? H2 gas. H2 gas. Excellent. And now we have to make sure to balance it. So if we had two H's, that means we needed two waters. That means we have two hydroxides and two sodium. So water is kind of strange because it acts like an acid in these reactions. Okay, now let's CIE and NIE this thing. CIE, does sodium break up? No, what would it break up into? Just sodium. So two sodium metals, okay? Water, also not going to break up because it's a liquid. But what about sodium hydroxide, Max? Is that going to break up? Mm. Yeah. yeah, because it's aqueous. Nicely done. And then we have our two hydroxide ions. And then we know H2 won't break up because it's a gas. Does anything cancel in this equation? Mackenzie. No. So the NIE is the same as the CIE. Nothing's going to cancel. OK. Questions? Okay, now I'm going to put you to work, and I want you to do this activity series worksheet.
with your group. Okay, question? <laughs>